Good morning, everyone, and welcome to worship today. Whether you are here gathered to participate in the act of remembrance later in the service, whether you're back for the first time in a long time, whether you're here because you're in with the Brits, or whether you are joining watching on the recording at home later in the comfort of your living room or kitchen, may you know the peace, the joy, and the love of our Lord Jesus Christ, who welcomes us all. No service is complete without the obligatory intimations and all of to break the line saying, this is the first time in years I've not had any. And then I said, I do. <laughs> now, it's very short. For those that have not realised what the posters are around the three different villages, there are wee boards that have been put up for walks of remembrance. We can't do remembrance the way we usually do. That's why we are gathered spatially, distant, in the, in the sanctuary just now, and we can't gather around the War Memorial. But, what we are able to do is to remember in a way that is personal to ourselves, and we can do so in a led act of remembrance with a short act of worship at the end through the, the boards that are throughout all the three villages. Um, Olive and myself know the roots of them. If you've not found what the roots are already, they're not miles in length. And it takes about, if you were to just walk it, about six minutes, I think, to walk poster to poster. But a lot of people, when you take time to watch, and if you've got a mobile phone, what you can do is with a QR code scanner, you can scan the QR code and the Remembrance Act, whatever's on the board, there is a video, or a voice recording that helps you to lead you in your own personal act of remembrance. And if you're not into the technology and the scanning, it's okay, everything's printed up on the board using words that you can read. Jesus told his disciples, my command is this, love each other as I have loved you. Greater love has no one than this, to lay down one's life. For one's friends. You are my friends if you do what I command. And as we heard, he commanded that we love one another as he loved us. So let us begin our service this morning, worshipping our living and loving God in our first hymn, that we will remain seated and listen to the, to the tune of, which is our God, our help in ages past but our hope for years to come, our shelter from the stormy blast, and our eternal home. Before the hills in order stood, our earth received her frame, from everlasting, thou art God, to endless years the same. O God, our help in ages past. Your love, your provision, 
and safety from harm. And we thank you this morning for the presence of the Holy Spirit who is here with us, who can comfort us. And although we know that you're here, and although we know and believe everything is possible within your power, we still have questions, we can still have doubts, and yes, we still struggle with our faith. But that's why we have each other. That's why we gather together in this place, and we gather together to be close to you at home as well. Because this helps to reassure us. This helps to encourage us to do the right things and there are people there for us in our times of need. Sometimes we also forget how you want us to be with other people. That we should be kind. That we should be caring. That we should be helpful. That we should avoid hate and we should avoid arguments wherever we can. So this morning, hear us as we say thank you for all you've given us. And in particular, we think about the protection that we have from war. For the freedom that we have today because others stood and continue to stand against evil, against terror, against injustice, all on our behalf. We give thanks that we can gather, that we can remember. And as we remember, help us to reflect on what we do, how we act, what our own action is and what our own inaction is. And we seek forgiveness for the times that we behave, behave wrongly, when we've lost sight of who you are, the one true Lord who we seek to praise and worship. So accept us this morning, as frail as we are, as broken as we are, and forgive us, strengthen us, as we put you front and centre of our worship this morning. Amen. Now we've got some questions for us all, really, um, and they're less contentious than the ones that I've asked in previous weeks, like who was the best band, um, who was the, what is the greatest sport. Um, lots of people have different answers, and I'm not wanting to start discussion and debate this morning. So I'm going to ask mainly for our young folks, but anybody can participate if you desire. Is it okay to call people names? Put your hands up if the answer is yes, keep it down if the answer is no. Okay, so we'll send them to that. Next question. If somebody is really bugging your happiness, if somebody is really annoying you, is it okay to hit them? <laughs> Not any longer, okay. <laughs> Wasn't expecting that answer. <laughs> Somebody's really annoying you. Is it okay to lose your cool and start shouting at them really loudly? And getting really grumpy at them? Understandable. It's understandable, but maybe not what we want to do. That's fair enough. Here's another thing. You're walking to school and you don't have a pelican crossing that you can press the button at. And somebody is just about to step out in front of a car that's driving along. Is it okay to stay? No, don't do that! Is that permitted? Yes. So we're allowed to shout at some points, but not at other points. We're not allowed to... Mm. I can see why this is a bit complicated. Because by shouting at somebody who's about to step out in front of the car, everyone can see that and hear that. And you might think, oh, I'm awful embarrassed. I've done something silly. But shouting at somebody because they've annoyed you, we weren't going to do that. Sometimes it's okay to cause a wee bit of tension. Sometimes it's okay to cause a wee bit of friction if you're going to help somebody to keep someone safe. 
But there are some times when we can imagine lots of different people who might say things without any evidence. There might be some people who will say things just to get a rise out of you, to see how much they can push you before you snap. But they are not doing things, they are not starting to do things in a way that you really think is helpful. But you know, sometimes people are not helpful. Sometimes people do things because they want to do things themselves and to be seen to do things by themselves. But each of us here this morning have a job to do to seek the right way. To seek ways of making sure people stay safe. And we've got that job to do in different places. Yes, whilst we're here this morning. But we've got it to do in our families. Those that we maybe live with, but those who are slightly further afield that we maybe don't see. We've got that to do in our communities and in our churches and in our schools. But we've also got to think of further afield as well. That our actions and inactions, the things that we do, the things that we don't do, the things that we say, how hurtful and how much of a problem can that cause other people? But we can avoid unnecessary conflict. Not just doing it to see how far we can push someone, but only doing it in the times where safety, where justice and doing the right thing matters. You might stand up for people but not make a show of it. Sometimes you need to shout, don't do that, as they're about to walk out in front of a bus. Because that's a safety issue. But you might be sitting at the lunch hall, you might be sitting in somewhere with, with people and you might think, the way they were speaking to that person wasn't very nice at all. I didn't like that. You, you weren't being kind. And you might say to that person quietly on the way back to class, or you might say to that person as you're walking home, oh, love, I didn't like that. See the way you spoke? How do you think that made Jack How do you think that made Robert feel. They might get really grumpy at me. She might not speak to me and I've caused conflict between the two of us. But do you know what? That's okay because I stood up for something that was right. And in time, hopefully, we'll be able to find out and agree on something. But that wee bit of conflict, while she might get grumpy with me, might cause all of the sudden think, hmm, maybe I should think about how I interact with other people. We can all do good wherever we are, in whatever way we are doing things just now. Yes, we all need to sit two metres apart from people that don't live with us. Yes, we can't get very close, but now since the beginning of lockdown, the one thing that I'm going on about is the compassionate spacing, not social distancing. But what do we put in that space that shows the people we're being distant from that we care? And sometimes standing up for the right things might cause us to be hurt. Standing up for the right things might cause a little bit of upset. But for as long as we are trying to do things and do things peacefully, for as long as we are trying to do things by seeking what God says about us and instructs us to do, that's always going to be the best way. And in our Bible reading that we're going to hear in a short moment, Jesus promises us something that's quite astonishing. That if you're upset, if there are times that are upsetting, if there are times that are hurtful or feel like it's downright impossible to get through, Jesus tells us that we're happy. Jesus tells us that we are happy when all these things are coming at us. When we feel sad, when we feel miserable, and you, if you're thinking right now, I'm not really sure that I could ever be happy if I'm feeling sad and miserable, if I'm hurt, and if I feel life's impossible. If you're thinking you don't really believe me, let's listen for the word of God as it's found in Matthew chapter 5, which is titled, True Happiness. True happiness. Jesus saw the crowds 
went up a hill where he sat down. His disciples gathered round him and he began to teach them. Happy are those who know they are spiritually poor. The kingdom of heaven belongs to them. Happy are those who mourn. God will comfort them. Happy are those who are humble. They will receive what God has promised. Happy are those whose greatest desire is to do what God requires. God will satisfy them fully. Happy are those who are merciful to others. God will be merciful to them. Happy are the pure in heart. They will see God. Happy are those who work for peace. God will call them his children. Happy are those who are persecuted because they do what God requires. The kingdom of heaven belongs to them. Happy are you when people insult you and persecute you and tell all kinds of evil lies against you because you are my followers. Be happy and glad for a great reward is kept for you in heaven. This is how the prophets who lived before you were persecuted. Amen. May God add his blessing to the reading of his holy word, and to his name be all praise and glory. Amen. Do you believe me now? Jesus promises us that in the lives ups and downs of life, that he's with us, and that when we've gone through all of life's ups and downs, we can be truly happy. You might not feel close to him. You might not feel that you are good enough. You might think that I'm not really good enough to go to church because I'm not feeling close just now. I don't feel close to God. I don't know that I'm not good enough to believe him. You might be feeling kind of down. But he reassures us that heaven is for us if we trust him that he is with us. If we are remembering and we are mourning those that we have loved and lost, we are happy, not because we've lost them, but we are happy because God comforts us. And then he tells us something else. He tells us that those who are working and working and leading for peace, they are the children of God. Now that might be a strange thing to think about, being a child of God, but what it means is, is that comfort. We look after our children. We look out for people. We try and keep them safe. We help teach them. And that's what God promises for all of us. He comforts us in times when we need it. He supports us in other times. He leads us always. And that's why we should be happy. And all the other Beatitudes that we have read this morning remind us that even in the most darkest, most miserable experiences of our lives, God is there beside us. He's got his arm round us saying, it's all right, I've got you. And that, that is why we are happy. Not because of the ups and downs, but because we've got God beside us. God gives us other people in our lives to support us, to help us. And it's our job then as children of God to do that for other people. Every single one of us here this morning has a job to do, a role to play. From the very youngest to the very oldest, and I'm deliberately looking at the stained glass window so as not to cause offence. And whoever you think you are, the youngest or the oldest, whether it's youngest at heart or whether you think you are just the oldest or whatever, God has a job for all of us. Perhaps the best way to think about this is with the thought of when you bring individual bits of thread together. Now I want you to think of thread. What colour are you? What texture do you have? Is it smooth? Is it slightly rough? Is it sparkly? Is it bright colour? Is it dark colour? And the reason that I'm 
asking you to think about this is because when we bring threads together, whether it is to make a piece of tartan, whether it is to make a suit, whether it is to make Harris tweed, or indeed if it's a tapestry, when all different colours come together we have something of true beauty. You could have a pile of threads on the table and you might call it an absolute mess. But with the right skill, with the right talent, that could become something quite beautiful. On its own, with nothing else, thread can be born. But with skill woven together, you produce a fabulous pattern. It could be a picture if it's a tapestry. And that's what God does with each and every single one of us. He takes us, whatever colour we are, whatever texture we are, whether or not we are a loose thread and wants to come together, he offers us an invitation to be a loose thread on its own, or to come together to be something really quite beautiful. If he gives us the choice, you can stay there, do things yourself, and maybe you are a bright sparkling piece of thread. Maybe you are perfectly beautiful, but would it not, does that bring you true happiness? Would it not be so much better that you come together with other colours to make something of true beauty? Will you be happy doing your own thing, always as a brightly coloured, sparkly bit of thread? But maybe you think, I picked a really dark colour, nobody would really want a dark coloured piece of tapestry or tartan. And you know, we all have moments where we're maybe not the brightest thread. But what we're able to do, and what we're able to think about, and you might not have the strength, the skill, or the ability to do things right, but you can. You work with one another. We all come together as individual strands of thread. No matter what you think you bring, or how messy you are, whether you are a pile of thread, untangled or tangled, God can take each and every single one of us. And in the next song we are reminded that God can use all of us. And God is with all of us in the good, the bad and the sad. And I want you to listen to the lyrics of the next song and see if you can identify um, a wee bit about how accepting his lead and accepting his guidance is a comfort to us. Abide with me, fast falls the eventide, the darkness deepens, Lord with me abide. When other helpers fail and all comforts flee, help of the helpless, Lord abide with me. Let's listen and reflect on abide with me.
New Trinity Parish Church. St. Michael's and All Angels Church. Staff and pupils of Ely Primary School. Collinsborough and Co-Conquer Community Council. At the eleventh hour of the eleventh day of the eleventh month. The guns fell silent on the Western Front to bring an end to the First World War. Our nation and our Commonwealth has recalled that moment through armistice and remembrance events down through the decades. Decades during which men and women of our armed services have continued to pay the ultimate sacrifice. Today we think of all those who have been and who are caught up in war. Every man, every woman and every child. Today we remember those who died for us long ago and those who are still dying as the wars go on and on. The generation that initiated this coming together at this time was the same generation that believed, that hoped that they had come through the war to end all wars. They were the people with hopes and yearning for peace. <coughs> There is room in this quiet time for those who have specific occasions and specific people to remember. There is room. There is room for those for whom indirect understanding must take over from direct experience. There is room for the old and there is room for the very young. There is room for the sorrowful, and there is room for the grateful. There is room for those who steadily hold a visual image in their mind's eye. And there is room for those who argue within themselves about the great issues of war and peace, of life and death, of humanity and inhumanity. There is room for words of scripture. No one has greater love than this to lay down one's life for one's friends. There is room for silence. 
It is sacred, this silence. Holy, this remembering. For only silent remembering can carry enough pain and truth together whilst whispering at dawn. It is enough. As we approach a two-minute silence, I invite you to stand as you are able in your space. Let us remember before God those who have died in war for the sake of justice and of peace. Those whom we knew and those whose memory we treasure and all those who have lived and died in the service of humankind. They shall not grow old as we that are left grow old. Age shall not weary them, nor the years condemn. At the going down of the sun and in the morning, we will remember them. When you go home, tell them of us and say, For your tomorrow we gave our today, and we remember them today. Please be seated. Let us draw near to God once again in prayer. Let us pray. You, God, are our God, and you are with us in all times of life to offer us hope and light and comfort. On this Remembrance Sunday, we give you thanks for the women and the men who gave themselves in times of war to help ensure that we can enjoy the blessings that you have given us today. We honour them in this act. We honour their courage, their sacrifice, their willingness to put themselves in harm's way for a better world. For the situations that are close to our own hearts and our own memories this morning, hear us now, we pray. God and Father of all, where there is hatred, Give love. Where there is injury, 
bring healing. Prayer that is distrust, restore faith. Prayer that is sorrow, renew hope. Prayer that is darkness. May you bring light. Let's be pray through Jesus Christ, the Prince of Peace. Amen. In an act of remembrance, it might seem a rather odd passage to have just before. Happy are those, and then a list of all things that didn't seem to, to be fit why you would be happy. But that's what Jesus told us to do. And in our reading today, we should think ourselves happy and blessed, in some of the translations it's blessed are those, but we should think ourselves happy in all situations and in all circumstances because we have an accompaniment with God. But trusting that God's got a plan and that God's got it in his hands, that we listen to his leading, <coughs> that's what we're advised to do. But it's not easy. It takes all of us to try and come together to support each other through a bit more difficult times. God takes all of us. He takes the humble. He takes those who follow him closely and dearly. He takes those who are merciful, those who are kind, those who are loving. Those who are doing their very best and thinking they're achieving little. But he takes these people who are working also for peace. And you know, he's then taking each of these people and stitching them beautifully into a fabulous community of people who, as loose threads, are probably a bit of a mess, not very tidy, unless you are. Elizabeth, who I'm told would get grumpy if I didn't see because the back of the tapestry is just as beautiful as the front. Now, I've done cross stitch when I was in school teaching, and oh my goodness me, I was just grateful the front looked for me. But some people, if you've got skill and talent to make the back look good, good. But generally, tartan only looks good from one direction. Cross stitch and tapestry looks good from one side. But God, we might focus on the things that we can't do, but God looks at the nice side, the good side. And he takes us as loose friends and as loose individuals and makes this beautiful community of people who are wanting to do good things for the community, who are wanting to strive for peace. There was a Christian watchmaker who helped people during the Second World War. Her name's Corrie Ten Boom, and you maybe have heard of Corrie Ten Boom in the past, but she wrote a beautiful poem. And this poem sums up how she felt God took all the different aspects of her life and stitched it together and wove it beautifully. And we're going to listen just now to that poem that you've been My life is but a weaving between my God and me. I cannot choose the colours. He weaveth steadily. Oft times he weaveth sorrow, and I, in foolish pride, forget he sees the upper and I the underside. Not till the loom is silent and the shuttles cease to fly will God unroll the canvas and reveal the reason why the dark threads are as needful in the weaver's skilful hand as the threads of gold and silver in the pattern he has planned he knows, he loves, he cares. Nothing this truth can dim. He gives the very best to those 
who leave the choice to him. Back to the very start of the service, it's not for us to decide how good we are, and it's not for us to decide how good other people are. It's for us all to try and encourage one another to do the best, because God is doing the guiding, and it's His skillful hand that does that weaving. But it's God's hand that throughout all the ages has led people and has guided them and kept them safe. And our last hymn this morning is thy hand O God has guided and it talks and tells of how God from the ancients right through to just now if we do what we heard in that poem and trust he can weave us he can use us and he will guide us all because we are one church we have one faith and we have one Lord and one master that we follow thy hand O God has guided After which you are uh, further invited and you're welcome to remain standing whilst the national anthem is played. For those who are wondering why we're not singing, we're just not allowed just now. If you're only here because of um, remembrance and the act of remembrance during our service this morning, we're not allowed to do the singing. But if you wish to sing in here loudly as we say at home, then Harris has recorded the service and it will be put up with the words uh, so you can watch it on YouTube later on. After the service is concluded, the benediction is pronounced and the national anthem is played, please remain seated in your pew and the duty team will allow you to exit the church in a single final orderly fashion so that we can continue to comply with the restrictions and the regulations in place. Please be standing. Now go forth from this place with renewed inspiration to do the work of God, to seek happiness, to be blessed and be a blessing to others, seeking good, not evil, to love goodness and to establish justice for all. And may the blessing of God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit be with you, those that you love 
those that you struggle to love, today, tomorrow, and every day. Amen.